Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. Today we're going to do another blind stock analysis and we're going to go into the video requests again and figure out which one we want to do a blind analysis on. Uh, but also reiterating on the A.O. Smith analysis. My goal with the video was that eventually everything money is going to come out with a video on it so I can compare my analysis with their analysis. So they come out with these videos from those requests based off the upvotes. So I will be making a video on that when they come out with a video on AO Smith, but at the moment they don't have that. So before I get into this video, first I am not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. So, going over to the video request. Okay. Uh, let's see which one we want to do. Wire doesn't got many upvotes. We got a Rio Tinto. Now, I believe that's commodity base. I don't want to do commodity base. Kavana, our Carvana, I did one on that. Turtle Beaches. Intel reevaluation. Eh. Um, Wayside Technology. Paramount. I uh, got a couple upvotes there. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got another Wayside Technology right here. It says it's an eight pillar stock. Okay, let's go. Let's do Wayside Technology. So I'm going to return to the software. Let's go to Stock Search. We're going to do Wayside Technology and see what's going on here. Okay, so I see Mark Cap 134 million, revenue 291 million. Their revenue is more than their market cap. Interesting. Uh, net income 10 million, current P of 12, and their five year average is 21. Profit margins a little bit on the low side with low gross margins. I don't know how I feel about that, but a very low price of sales. It is a profitable company with a five year average of 2.8. It does pay a dividend. Now their five-year average free cash flow is 13.17 million. Now their year-to-date is only 5.4 million. So that's a very large decrease. Let's see what they do. Wayside Technologies, a cloud-based value-added IT distribution and solutions company specializing in emerging technologies. It operates across the United States, Canada, Europe, throughout multiple business units, including Climb Channel Solutions, Sigma, Gray Matter, Inner Work, and okay, so the technology company is based across the United States, Canada, and Europe. So it does have a little bit of international exposure. I do like that. Uh, but looking at the dividends paid, about 3 million dividends paid. Now, even taking that decreased year-to-date free cash flow, uh, their free cash flow easily covers that dividend. So that is a positive, but that still is a solid decrease in free cash flow. So I'm going to make sure I go look at that. They have return on assets, return on equity, and their year-to-date return on invested capital 9.9%, but their five-year average is 24.1%. So on a five-year average standpoint, they do a very good job investing their capital. Uh, yeah, so we uh, not not too bad. A couple things that we need to look at, though. Uh, they're not buying back too many shares. Uh, pretty flat. Now, if they were overvalued uh, recently... I don't take it as a negative that they're not buying back shares because you don't want the company buying back shares when their stock price is overvalued. So potentially a positive there, but we're not sure. We'll figure more out about that when we get into the charting. Uh, Five-year average. So just getting under that 22.5 right now, currently 21.9. But their year-to-date uh, PE, 12.5. So that's uh, well beneath 22.5. Five-year return on invest capital, revenue growth, you name it. So long-term liabilities divided by five-year average free cash flow, uh, 0.27. But as we uh, mentioned with the free cash flow, they had a solid decrease. So I'm going to want to actually do an analysis with this decreased uh, free cash flow and match that up to the long-term debts. But going out their five-year average, it only take them a quarter of a year to cover their total long-term liability. So nothing too concerning right there. So let's go into the income statement, and let's see the revenue. Okay, so uh, consistent revenue, and then a big decrease out here in 2017, but then right started getting back up to that. So now they've actually gotten back to this consistent revenue. Now they're still a little bit lower, but in 2016, you could have FOMO'd into this and said, man, look at this revenue growth, and then boom. 
now they're getting back up to that 300 million range so this uh, that is that is a good sign but then also looking at their cost of goods sold their cost of goods sold over here was pretty much even so they might have had some sort of acquisition or uh, I, I don't know maybe a sell off of a department where yeah I don't know so we'll have to go figure that out as well um, net income they've been oh consistent very consistent net income but then they did have this nice spike uh, in that year of 2021 so I'm actually going to go into a quarterly and look at that spike of net income so you can see they are consistent right around here but then they this is the year 2021 they go from having 500k in net income to 2 million that is a huge spike but now they've consistently put that up these last two quarters kind of right in line right there so not as alarming let's go to the shares outstanding oh my gosh very low amount of shares right here Good lord, only only four million shares. Now you can see a very consistent dividend. They haven't increased that at all. So not a dividend growth type of company in terms of that aspect. Let's go to a annual and see that dividend. Yeah, so that dividend has been really consistent at sixty eight cents. Um, okay. Let's go to the balance sheet. Look at the current ratio. So total assets 188.77 million. I want to see their total liabilities much lower than that. Uh, total liability. So current ratio about a 1.5, maybe a little bit lower than that, 1.45 somewhere in that range. So I'm not worried about this company going under by any means. Uh, but total long-term liabilities. Oh my gosh, only 3.5 million in total long-term liabilities. That that's pretty crazy right there. So. Uh, I'm not worried about this company going under by any means in terms of that aspect. So now let's go look at the cash flow statement. Um, okay, so here was their big decrease. Oh man, they went from 48 million. Man, this is this to me right here is a big red flag in terms of their free cash flow. So their five-year average free cash flow was definitely skewed based off that year of 2021 what happened in the year 2021 we printed a bunch of money a lot of people had money to spend so right there man that is, that is a tough one when you're talking about the free cash flow because i mean this 13 million five-year average is definitely skewed by this year right here so that is a little bit alarming to me uh did they make any acquisitions where's their acquisitions Hmm, I don't see their acquisitions tab, so they must not have made any, unless it's just not on here. Huh, okay, interesting. So repurchases capital stock, they have been consistently repurchased capital stock, not too much, only 700k in this current last four quarters, but let's also go look at the stock price. So the stock price hit a high of 38, let's go to the max. Oh, I can see a decent trend line right off the start right here. But this has been ripping in stock price. In the year 2020, before, in the year 2019, they were at 11. And now they've gone up to highs of 38. So over 300% run in terms of that that run right there. Yeah, interesting. So a couple of things that were alarming. But there were some positives in there. I think... It's going to be hard to judge what type of uh, revenue that they're going to have just because that one year was so skewed. But, you know, we do have some decent information to go off of right there. I think I will make a part two, but I might skip over that stock analyzer where we're plugging in numbers because, you know, it might be hard to plug in numbers. And they're not extremely profitable, only 3% profit margin. So we might just skip over to the chart in the next video. I'm not sure. I'll, I will decide tomorrow when I uh, am making that video. But this is going to wrap up the video. I hope you guys like the content. And we will see you on the next one.